Welcome in to Brave the Attempt podcast. I'm your host, Wyatt Spaulding, Special Olympic athlete. And today we have with us audiologist Kelly Pritchett. Kelly, how's it going? Great. It's going wonderful. How are you doing? Good. So Kelly helps out at the Healthy Athletes when we need doctors to volunteer, and she does the hearing station for us. And we're going to get to know a little bit more about her and her experience with Special Olympics. So Kelly, why don't you just tell us like where you grew up and um, just how you got involved in like sports or health growing up? Yeah, sure. So um, actually, I grew up all over. Um, my childhood was spent uh, living in different states. So I had um, an opportunity to live in Iowa two different times, Georgia two different times, Colorado once. Um, and then eventually my family made it back to Nebraska. Um, and so I went to high school in Nebraska. I went to, excuse me, I went to college in Nebraska um, and uh, played a little bit of sports growing up, not a ton, a little bit of softball, a little bit of volleyball. Um, I was a cheerleader uh, in high school. So um, that was kind of the extent of my of my sports. But um, I went to college um, thinking that I wanted to be a speech language pathologist. Um, and then when I got there, kind of changed my mind. So, but yeah, that's a little bit about me. Awesome. So when you went into like the field of being an audiologist, like, what was the schooling like and training? Did you have to go extra years for school? How was that? I did, yes. Yeah. So uh, like I said, I went to college thinking I was going to be a speech language pathologist. Um, and as a speech language pathologist, uh, I had to take an audiology course <clears throat> during my undergraduate schooling. And so when I took my undergraduate course, I loved it. It um, I just loved learning everything about the ear, um, how it's so small, but it has such a huge impact on what we do to be able to communicate and just hear and make sense of the world around us. Um, and so kind of at that point, I decided, you know what, I think I'm going to kind of shift gears. Um, and so I decided to go the audiology route. <clears throat> From there, I went to graduate school, so I had to go um, and get a master's degree uh, to be an audiologist. So I went to graduate school here in Lincoln um, at the University of Nebraska, and I got my master's degree in audiology. And then I worked a little bit, um, and I liked what I did, um, but at that point, uh, people were starting to get their doctoral degrees. And so I kind of thought, you know, I'm still young. Um, maybe I should kind of make the shift. Um, and so then while I was working full time, I went back and worked on my doctoral degree as well. And I finished my doctoral degree in 2007. Um, and it was at that point then that I joined the faculty at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. Nice. So what is it that you do now for the University of, University of Nebraska? Yeah, so I'm on faculty there. I do a lot of different things. Um, I teach some undergraduate courses. So that course that I fell in love with as, as a student, I get to teach that course to undergraduate students. Um, I also teach as part of our doctoral program. And so um, we have students who come to our program um, to want to be uh, an audiologist. And so I I help teach them um, both in the classroom and in the clinic. Uh, we have a clinic on campus where patients can come in who are concerned that they might have hearing or balance related disorders or concerns related to their hearing or their balance. Um, and so they can come into our clinic. And so I also see patients in our clinic where I do hearing tests and I fit hearing aids. Um, and then I also work with students to get the necessary clinical experience throughout their graduate program. Sweet. That sounds really exciting. Like you said, it's something new every day. So it is. It's something new every single day. Absolutely. Yes. You're also on something called the uh the Special Olympics uh health board or the yeah, Special Olympics Health Hearing Program. Yeah. Can you talk to us about that and how do you got involved in that with Special Olympics? 
Yeah. So uh, back in, gosh, I'm trying to remember now, um, all the way back in 2009, right? So we're talking about almost 15 years ago. Um, I was, uh, somebody reached out to me at that point um, or at that time. Uh, she was the director for Healthy Hearing here in Nebraska. And they were wanting to get another um, Healthy Hearing clinical director to help with the uh, services for our special Olympic athletes in Nebraska. And before you can do that, you have to be trained um, on how to be a, a healthy hearing clinical director. So in 2009, um, I went and got trained uh, and I actually had the opportunity to go to Boise, Idaho. And I got trained as part of the World Winter Games um, it was in February of 2009, and that's when I got all of my training um, on how to be a healthy hearing clinical director. Uh, part of the reason, too, was in the summer of 2010, uh, Nebraska was going to be hosting the uh, USA Games. Yeah. And so um, they wanted to make sure that we had plenty of volunteers uh, for that. And so that was part of the other reason why I went and got trained is not only just to help with the yearly things that we do for our Special Olympic athletes here in Nebraska, um, but also with um, helping with those national games uh, in Nebraska in the summer of 2010. So yeah, my first sort of exposure to Special Olympics uh, was in February of 2009 when I went to Boise. Wow, that's cool. So, like, what have you learned, like, just from your patients with and without disabilities? Like, is there a difference between someone with a disability and their hearing or about the same? Or what have you noticed when you have the USA Games or volunteering at Healthy Athletes every year? Yeah, so... um Part of what Healthy Hearing has done and the people who um, started Healthy Hearing is they really looked at, so if, if you're familiar at all with healthy athletes, right, there's a lot of different disciplines that healthy mm -hmm. athletes covers. Um, and kind of the two big ones that started healthy athletes were, um, oh, it was uh, eyes, so uh, yeah. vision and dental were yeah. the kind of the two um, disciplines that first started um, the healthy athletes uh, program as we know it today. And one of the founders of the Healthy Hearing Program had done some research and he had worked uh, with individuals, both with and without uh, intellectual disabilities. And he found that um, individuals with intellectual disabilities have a four times greater chance of having hearing problems um, compared to the general population who doesn't have an intellectual disability. And so because of that, um, he started the Healthy Hearing Program through uh, healthy athletes. And so that's really what kind of prompted that is because we know that a lot of the individuals um, who come through Special Olympics or who participate um, in Special Olympics, uh, likely um, not, there's a greater chance that they'll have some hearing problems. And so we wanted to try to provide services um, to our athletes so we could uh, potentially get um, get them identified earlier uh, and get them the help um, or the services that they need uh, to still be able to to participate um, in their in their athletic events. So um, that's kind of our uh, mantra, I guess, is to we want to focus on giving athletes um, the best hearing that they can so they can be successful in their um, and, and, per, and be able to easily participate in their athletic events, I guess. Yeah. So like, like I've had teammates that have hearing aids before and stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, so you can give them their, those, or what else can you do to like uh, make sure our hearing is okay besides like, you know, hearing aids and yeah, that's a great question. So um, <clears throat> one of the other things that we see a lot with our Special Olympic athletes is just keeping your ears clean. Um, as uh, wax starts to build up in the ear canals, that can affect hearing. And so one of the things that we do as part of our healthy hearing screenings is that we're always looking in the ears. We want to know, um, does somebody have a lot of wax? Because again, we know that that can temporarily uh, affect their hearing. And so it might be referring them on um, to have their the wax removed to help hearing. Um, if they don't have hearing aids, um, you know, we're trying to see maybe do they need some hearing aids? Um, 
If the hearing is poor enough, um, we might need to refer them on to a different kind of doctor um, where they might talk about cochlear implants or maybe there's some other sort of device um, that can be um, used to help them hear. So there's a lot of different options um, that are available to individuals who have hearing loss. Um, I would say the, the most common though is like you said, um, especially with some of your teammates are, are the hearing aids. Yeah, for sure. Can you can you injure your like eardrum by playing sports? I never heard of anybody doing that, but is it possible? So it would probably depend on um kind of what sport it is. Um usually not, however, um, if there would be some sort of like blow to the side of the head, um, then yes, potentially there could be enough force um that it could do some damage to the ear and the ear canal and maybe the eardrum. Um, but usually no, um, just by playing sports, we don't expect there to be, um, a problem with the hearing, but, um, like I said, if something pretty significant like that um, would happen, it could, um, I think the biggest thing is just, you know, being aware of your hearing and being able to, um, know, um, and tell somebody if maybe you don't feel like you're hearing well, um, because then again, we want to make sure that we can get you, um, the services to see if there is in fact a hearing problem. And if so, what might be some appropriate ways to treat that hearing problem? Okay. So like as athletes and we don't like, we want to take care of our ears, you said like doing cleaning out your ears. Is there anything mm -hmm. else, you know, we can do to make sure our ears don't get damaged? Absolutely. Yeah. So one of the biggest things that we can prevent um, is hearing problems after being exposed to loud noises. Um, and so that is something that we really uh, talk to all of our patients about, but even um, patients or again, even our um, uh, Special Olympic athletes, you know, wearing earbuds, um, wearing headphones, um, while that's fine and there's no problem with that. Um, you do want to make sure that the volume on those devices isn't turned up too loudly. We want to keep those volume, um, that volume at a little bit of a lower level, um, especially if you're going to wear the headphones or the earbuds or AirPods or whatever it is that you're using um, for long periods of time. Uh, we want to make sure that those uh, volume levels stay low um, because, again, we know that if we're exposed to loud noise, um, over long periods of time that can do that. Um, also if you're around any loud noises outside of like wearing ear pods or, or headphones. So, um, if you're around any like motorcycles or ATVs or any sort of like, um, like motor vehicle or something that has a really, really loud kind of sound to it that can cause hearing loss. Um, if you are around any firearms. So again, um, if you, even if it's hunting or trap shooting or, or something along those lines, um, if you use any sort of loud tools, um, anything that's really, really loud, uh, being exposed to that can cause hearing loss. And so we want to make sure that if we are exposed to that really loud noise, we're wearing hearing protection instead um, to protect our ears. Um, and that's something that everybody should be doing if they're exposed to loud noises. Um, and there's a lot of different kinds of hearing protection on the market. So you can wear the muffs that kind of cover your ears completely. Um, you can get molds of your ears made so you can wear some custom kinds of things. So it kind of just depends on the type of noise that you're around and how much you're around that noise um, as to what kind of protection we would recommend wearing. But um, those are going to be probably the biggest thing that we can talk to our um, athletes about is keeping sure that they're not listening to things too loudly. Um, and if they are around loud noises, to make sure that they're wearing that hearing protection. Great. So God, what was it like, like the very first time for you when you helped out at Healthy Athletes? Like, what was your impression of it? And what do you think? So given the fact that it was the Winter World Games, right? So it's a big event. Um, mm -hmm. There were thousands of Special Olympic athletes from all over the world um, that were in Boise, Idaho. And so my first experience was like, oh my gosh, are all of the events this big and this um, it was it was very, very cool. Um, it was really cool to be able to um, interact with the athletes, um, not only from the United States, but again, from all over the world. Um, 
I think one of the biggest things that I felt like that was really, really cool was um, that a lot of times as audiologists, we think that we can only do our work in a very specific kind of place, I guess. So when we think about doing audiology, I think about being like at my office where I have all of the equipment that I need, where I have the best rooms to test people's hearing in. Um, you know, I have all the, the, the things that I need to fit a hearing aid and to check a hearing aid. Um, and so I think sometimes when we think about the way audiology is, we think about these very specific kinds of places. And I think what I really thought was interesting about going to Boise was we didn't have those places, right? We didn't, it, the, what we did in Boise wasn't like my clinic at work, mm -hmm. um, but yet we were still able to do audiology, so to speak. And so I think for me, it kind of opened my eyes as to um, different ways to still do audiology and provide the services that audiologists provide um, within an environment that isn't typical, I guess. And so that, that I think was really cool for me. Um, I also loved the idea of all of these different health disciplines providing services to the athletes. Um, I know sometimes we can, you know, as audiologists, we think about, you know, like hearing is the most important thing. And, you know, and then vision can be like, no, vision's the most important thing. No, this is the most important thing. And the fact that we were all working kind of together, I mean, we all had our own separate areas, right? Because like mm -hmm. vision is in one place and dental is somewhere else and hearing is somewhere else. Um, but I think the fact that we were all there for all of the athletes, um, and we all played our specific roles was just really, really cool. Um, and not only that, but getting to meet then audiologists from all over the world, right? So not only did I get to meet Special Olympic athletes from all over the world, there were audiologists who were being trained just like me from Greece and from New Zealand and from South America. And so there were professionals all over and, and being able to um, work with individuals who again, do audiology, right? Um, mm -hmm. But do it in different countries and, and what are those differences and how are those differences, um, how do we overcome those differences? I guess um, that was also really, really special. Yeah. So I, I, I loved Boise. It was a wonderful experience. Um, and then being able to like fit hearing aids on site too. Like we had a whole section of, because, you know, there were several athletes from other countries that didn't have access to hearing aids, right? We're, um, we're fortunate for the most part here in the United States. Um, but, you know, there's several countries across the world that don't have access to those services. And so being able to, to work with those athletes and get them to hearing aids that they that could benefit them and to see how that then impacts their ability to be a, an athlete and, and again, participate in their events was super cool. Yeah. I mean, like I always tell the athletes like, yeah, you got to go to either is it the world games or your local ones. Like first it's all free. Like, yes. and so it's like, why would you not go to, yeah. I'm not going to lie. Hearing isn't probably the first one you would think of like, Oh, I need to get, my ears check unless like you really can't hear anything exactly i mean because like i mean look like glasses and probably the dental are the first two but then mm -hmm. it's like oh like hearing have you were you ever at one of the healthy athletes and then realize like oh you have a significant hearing problem which they had no idea about yes Yes. Yeah. So it was, um, it was really, and this was even here in the United States. Um, and so it wasn't even at a world games. Like this was at our Nebraska games up in Omaha, Nebraska at our state games in May. Um, there was an athlete who came through and she thought she maybe had a problem with her hearing, but she really didn't know the extent. Um, and she'd never worn hearing aids. She just kind of got by. And, um, after she came through our, um, after she came through our screening, um, this was at a time where we could, 
uh, work with an organization to get free hearing aids for our Special Olympic athletes. Um, so then after the games in Omaha, she came to see me at the clinic in Lincoln. Um, I fit her with hearing aids and she was just blown away. Like, oh my gosh, I had no idea what I was missing. I knew that I maybe had some trouble hearing, um, but I didn't know it was this bad. I'd never worn hearing aids before. Um, and she still wears hearing aids today. She still comes and sees me at my clinic in Lincoln. Um, and this was somebody who, like I said, never never knew it was quite that bad until she came um, to our screening event at one of our state games. Wow. That's, that's amazing that yeah, you found that it problem was, for her. Yes. They make you feel pretty, when you help someone with or without a disability and fix their problem, they make you feel pretty good satisfaction. Yeah. It, you know, that's, that's really why I do what I do. Um, I love to um, see the impact that we can have um, and really, it's just, again, allowing people. She back. So. Yeah. So, um, well, thank, uh, thanks for coming on um, and sharing your story and, we really appreciate you helping out at the healthy athletes. So we can't wait to see you this year. And do you bring other, um, uh, do you bring other people with you from the hearing department or how many of you do. come? Yeah. So usually in the healthy hearing, um, so we're always at Creighton, right? We're always at the Scott Student Center doing our screenings during the May games and, and our summer games in May up in Omaha. And it's usually myself. I usually have one to two other audiologists and then I bring students with me. So the students who are training to be audiologists in our program at UNL, um, I bring them with me and they are the ones who are doing the screenings on the athletes. Um, it's giving them a really good experience on how to, again, provide those services outside of a typical clinic. Um, and then for those athletes who do have hearing aids, um, we have a station that we can check the hearing aids. We can listen to them, clean them up, make sure that they're working well. Um, because at that point, we already know that they need hearing aids. It wouldn't make sense for them to come through our screening, um, but we still want to provide a service. And so we can also do hearing aid checks, again, cleaning the hearing aids, making sure that they're working well. Um, so even if an athlete does have hearing aids, stop by our station. Um, again, we can still work with you, even though you, we, we may not be testing your hearing. Um, we can definitely still check the hearing aids if you have them. So. Great. Well, thanks so much, Kelly. And can't wait to see you at our healthy athletes event in spring games. So thank you. That sounds great. Thanks, Wyatt. It's good. Nice meeting you. You too.